Hey everyone, let's wrap up January. January somehow feels like it's been going on forever. I don't know, 2022 starting off weird and didn't change anything about the time feeling. But that's me just rambling. So let's start with looking at videos I uploaded in January. In January, of course, I started with my self-image and my 11-year anniversary video. Thank you all very much for the comments and the congratulations and all the support you've given me in the last 11 years. I also uploaded my letter to January and I apologize for the, well, basically lack of video. I completely forgot to film anything this month. I don't know what happened, but I already filmed something for February, so you can be sure there will be not just my coffee machine making coffee. <clears throat> the rest of the videos I uploaded were focused on books, so I'll mention that I uploaded a video when I talk about the books. So let's just start talking about the books that I mentioned in videos before. And let's start with the first reads of the year, which were three novellas by Yuri Herrera. And I made a video about all the books by Yuri Herrera because now I've read all his four novellas that have been translated into English. So I started the year by reading Kingdom Comes, then The Transmigration of Bodies and A Silent Fury by Yuri Herrera. These are three novels under 200 pages. I think they're around about the 100 page mark. And Kingdom Comes is about a musician who gets picked up by a gangster boss and gets to play music about him and support his yeah being the gangster boss and things it's a wonderful look at this musician's life and position in the general crime scene that is around there about around this person and the crime boss and also creating a lovely atmosphere about his personality and him be falling in love and the general violence that is around. A Transmigration of Bodies looks at a young man who is, um, I think it's a fixer what he was called, I forgot, sorry, but he's taking care of things for other people. Also crime related a lot and Unfortunately, this is a pandemic book. I didn't know when it went in, but all of a sudden I found myself reading about a lockdown and everybody being scared to go outside and breathing on people. And I was like, ah, a little bit too close to home, but it was wonderfully done. It wasn't at the center of the story. It was just the backdrop of making things harder that they had to do. And basically there was a switching of bodies that was at the center of the story. But also the atmosphere created and the people you look at Wonderful. A Silent Fury is a nonfiction about a mine fire that happened in the town where Yuri Herrera grew up. And it's basically a look at how capitalism and colonialism and big companies control what's getting told and how they affect or look down or mistreat workers and the little people. So in general, what I like about Yuri Herrera's writing is that the atmosphere he creates feels magical, it feels fantastical, but he looks at the little people in everyday life dealing with the situations and the crime that is going on and violence that is part of daily life apparently in Mexico, or at least at that part where he looks at and focuses at. So I can highly recommend his writing. I loved it. All the three books were wonderful. The next three books I talked about in a reading vlog. So let's start with the one I enjoyed least, which is The Diary of a Nobody. It's a, oh, what was it, 1880s, 1890s little novella that is a diary of some random middle-aged white man, let's be honest. It's English classic. And I, I had the idea going into it that it was going to be a funny book. It was hilarious. I didn't find it that funny. Maybe it would have been more funny to contemporaries. I don't exactly know. It's basically him moving out into the country and having a new situation and then his almost grown up son being a little off a disturbance or annoyance just because he just quits his job and he's completely different to his father, generational conflicts and friends that the son has and friends that the father has, some of that. It's, I found myself not interested while reading, but after I finished, I thought this is actually an interesting portrait of what life was like at that time and criticizing generational conflict and the changes between living in the country or living in the city and different ideas about 
life in general. So I think contemporaries would have enjoyed it more. And also for people that are interested in reading about that period right now and have more knowledge of picking up little clues, uh, the I don't know, the little hints and maybe also the jokes that I didn't get, that would be more interesting. Other than that, I don't think I would recommend it to anyone just for the book itself, if you're not particularly interested in the period. In the reading log, I also talked about Listening to Taste by Stanley Tucci, and oh my god, that was such a good audiobook. I heard only good things about it, but listening to Stanley Tucci narrate the relationship he has with food and the stories of food and his life and always giving you recipes just made me hungry and I wanted to eat all the time. Not really cook, but that's what I ended up doing. But you really got sucked into a world of enjoying food and food being pleasurable and the meaning it had in his life. There's also a period where he lost the ability to taste because he got sick. There is a huge part of that, so be warned that there is talk of cancer. But it is done in such a wonderful way, the way he talks about it and the effect it had on his life and especially on his quality of life that he lost his sense of taste and couldn't eat as he wanted to or was used to. It was really, really enjoyable. That sounds horrible. Anyway, the book itself is really good. If you were thinking about getting it, I recommend the audiobook. You can just fly through it. And as usual, with audiobooks and memoirs, if you don't feel like you can concentrate on everything, it doesn't matter. You can always jump back in and pick up what you missed. The last book I talked about in the reading blog at length is Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is a book about an Arrow Ace character and her discovering or coming to terms with her sexuality. So it starts with her prom night and then going on to university or college and a lot of her life and trying to fit in, trying to be normal and realizing for herself that normal is not the normal for her because she really doesn't really feel all these emotions that she always thought she wanted and would have and experience one day. And it's a wonderful look at her coming to terms with that and how her friends are dealing with that and the mistakes she makes, her friends make, a lot of things dealing with trying to fit in and accepting to not and then also how to look out at a future and what does it mean for her to be arrow ace and not find that family that she always thought she would have. And yeah, I thought it was wonderfully done. I had some issues with the writing, but that could also be that I am not the target audience. I'm about 20 something years older than the people that are probably the target audience for the book. And there are also maybe some generational clues that I missed because honestly, I don't know why every piece of clothing had to be mentioned that people are wearing. Maybe there was some secret message in there that teenagers or younger people today would understand. But that also leaves the question how well the book is going to age. Anyways, if you are interested into learning about or reading about an aromantic asexual experience or coming out story, I guess, I would recommend Loveless. There are also two books that I haven't talked about. One is The Employees by Olga Raden. And mainly I haven't talked about it because I think it's rather good to go into this blind. I've seen this book everywhere and I was just curious, so I picked it up. And it's a science fiction story, sort of, which is told through interviews about a work situation. And it's different people. You never know who's talking. You never know if it's a human or an android about the situation. You can just guess by reading that things shift and change. And it is fascinating in the way that it is talking about work and life in that situation for the people that are interviewed but it's also rather confusing at the beginning you don't know who's talking you don't know what's going on especially me i did, went in blind didn't know anything other than that it was science fiction and it is fascinating how much information you get during the course of reading it at some point you can feel like you can pinpoint who's talking and you see where things are going. There's so much commentary on it. A lot of people have made more detailed reviews where they go into detail, but I don't want to do that because I want you to go into 
it blind and have the experience for yourself to see how it impacts you. That's why I didn't talk about it and I'm still not much talking about it. And I'm going to stop here. The last book I haven't talked about was I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. I listened to this on audio and it's I think a little over an hour and it's very well done. It's very easy to listen to even though it talks about hard topics. It's very personal and this book at one point had me thinking I really like hearing about it but I also felt angry that we ask people to be this vulnerable about themselves and sharing their stories to better comprehend their lives and their dealings and other people and I really recommend this book to anyone who feels they need to understand more how other people work. Vivek Shreya in this book talks about her experience growing up a boy or a man, being a man, trying to be a man and then transitioning to be a woman and all the time her interactions or her yeah confrontations or connections, I don't know the right word, but the her dealing with men and dealing with herself as a man and also with other men and how that made her feel and why she's afraid of men. And it's heartbreaking and enlightening. It's personal, it's vulnerable, it's very well written. But at the same time, like I said, I'm very angry that we need people to share this personal side of their lives to help us to put people who don't live in that situation to understand it. Does that make any sense? Anyways, read the book. And that was all my reading of January. I had a very good January. I really enjoyed most of the books I read. I managed to upload a few videos. I also had a dip of productivity and mood in the middle of January, but it's January. We don't want to expect too much. I also want to talk a little bit about my Korean learning as that's going on because I finished my Pimsleur course. So I listened to all three levels and I'm trying to find something similar to continue and I haven't succeeded. Currently I'm trying out Talk To Me In Korean which is a podcast and a website but the difference or what I really enjoyed about Pimsleur is that I could go outside have half an hour listen and repeat while I was out walking and learning on the fly or without sitting down and learning. Now I realize the podcast is easy to listen to but a lot of it is them talking and then introducing grammar and phrases but there's no repeating like before so I'm less engaged or participating in the podcast so I'm missing that. Also it's less information in one podcast than compared to one lesson in the PIMS lockers. And currently I'm struggling with progress because what I need to do is sit down at home and learn. And that was the reason why I started with PIMS in the first place, because I knew I wouldn't be able to sit down at home and learn, but I needed something that I could go while walking outside or being in movement and not really actually sitting down a long period of time to feel that I'm making progress. So I'm struggling a little bit, but I'll keep continue trying things. I thought of trying Duolingo this month and seeing where that will go. But that's how that is going at the moment. And now it's your turn. Tell me about your January. Did you have a good reading month? Anything exciting you read? Anything you want to share? Have you read any of the books that I mentioned and heard about them? Or are you curious about the employees? Because everybody's talking about it everywhere. I don't know how that happened, but everybody was posting pictures of it on Instagram. Anyways, let's talk in comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.